assalamu alaikum students today we will discuss about the functions and functions are special kind of relations and you know we have already discussed about the relations and function functions are basically special kind of relations in which uh, inputs are related to outputs therefore in this lecture we will discuss about the function data type and uh, declaring function variables on function data type then we will discuss about the partial and total functions and then we will learn about the lambda representation of the function students as i discussed earlier that functions are special kind of relations where inputs are associated with outputs and you know that each input must be associated with one and only one output in this way we can say that each algorithm is a function and each program is a function and sometime we need to associate a single item with each element in a set therefore we use a special kind of relation which is called a function a function is a binary relation where an element can appear one and only one in the first element in a pair a function between two sets x and y is a relation between those sets that has a special property namely that each member of the from set is related to at most one member of the to set students we need to associate a unique registration number to a student in a university management system similarly in a hospital management system we need to associate a unique bed to each patient therefore functions are extremely common in model of requirements for building software products if the library has a rule that a book can be borrowed by one person at a time then we should use a function from books to persons to model that part of the state in the library if this function is called lent to then we should declare it as follows and you know that we need to declare variables on types therefore this is basically a function data type and we can declare variable lent to on this function data type and this is basically set of all possible functions from book to person students as we have discussed that function is a set of order pairs where no first element of each order pair appear twice therefore if we take the set of the first element of each order pair of a function which is actually the domain of the function if the domain set of the function f does not contain each element of from set then the function would be known as a partial function for example you can see that f is a function which contain two order pairs b2 and d2 and if we make a domain set of the function f it would contain b and d the first element of both the order pairs and this domain set does not cover the from set of the function f where function f is declared 
so the function f is a partial function therefore we can define a partial function is a relation that maps each element of x to at most one element of y and x arrow y the arrow is a, a basically with a line in its center represents the all possible functions all possible partial functions and uh, this is basically the from set can also be known as a input set and to set for the function can also be called as a output set a term partial function is sometimes used to describe what is here called a function as we know that any function f contains order pairs where the first element of each order pair cannot appear twice and if we generate a domain set of each order pair in a function f and that domain set for function f contain each and every element of from set for function f or input set of function f then the function f would be known as a total function for example you can see that in this diagram that function f contain three order pairs b2 c1 and d2 and the first element of these three order pairs are not repeating b is appearing one and only one time and similarly c and d elements are not repeating element in order pairs and if we generate the domain set of the order pairs in function f it would contain three elements b c and d and all these elements are appearing in the from set x for function f or input set x for function f therefore function f is a total function and we can define that if each element of x is related to unique element of y then partial function is a total function and set of all possible total functions can be represented by x arrow y and here the arrow sign is without a line in the center Now we consider an example of a function address which is declared on a function type from passport number to address where a pass set passport number is a input set for function address and uh, address is an output set for the function address as we all know that each passport contain a unique address therefore a function variable address would be called as a total function if we write each and every order pair of a function in a set then it is known as a function representation by enumeration for example we declared a function variable lent2 on a set of all possible functions from person to books and uh, if we have three borrowers jo su and le 
and books are represented by the numbers natural numbers so this is a basically function representation of function len2 by enumeration and you can see that the first element of the order pair which is 29 does not appear twice similarly all the first elements of each order pair does not appear more than once therefore lent2 is a function which also communicates that a single book can be lent to a single borrower mean to say that a single book cannot be borrowed by two persons students it's a question to you whether this set can be set as a function the answer is no because book number 5767 appearing twice that book 567 is issued to Su as well as Lay. Therefore, it's not a valid function. It can be said as a relation, but it would not be a function. Students in the library management system, a single book can be issued to a single person. Therefore, the variable len2 is a function variable which is declared on set of all possible functions from book to person and the arrow sign is basically represents the function data type and the variable len2 can be declared as uh, on a set of all possible relations which can be represented by book double arrow person because each function is also a relation therefore the predicate the set of all possible function would be a subset of set of all possible relations and it formalizes that the fact every function from book to person is also a relation from book to person We may define a relation double on the set of natural numbers and this relation can be considered as a total function because for each and every natural number m there is a unique number n such that m to n belongs to double. For example each element of input set for function double has its output for example 0 has its double 0 1 natural number 1 has its double value 1 natural number 2 had its double 4 natural number 3 had its double 6 and so on because each and every member of the input set for function double generates output therefore double would be considered as a total function students as we have discussed that the function double is a total function which is declared on natural numbers two natural numbers the reason for double as a total function is that that each and every member of from set for function double generates output in a two set if we declare a function half from natural numbers to natural numbers then the function half would not be a total function the reason is that 
each element in a from set would not generate a valid output in a to set for example element 1 in a from set would generate output 0 0.5 which is not valid for it similarly element 3 5 7 and so on in a from set would not generate a valid output in a two set therefore the function half would be said as a partial function now we consider a function root which actually generates square root of each natural number and its output set is also a natural number Therefore, the root would be a partial function because for each positive integer or natural number, it is not possible to generate an integer square root. For example, integer square root of 2 is not possible, integer square root of 7 is not possible. Therefore, we cannot generate output for each and any, every element in a from set. Therefore, square root would be a partial function and root is declared on a set of all partial functions from n arrow n and arrow is a with the line in a center. Similarly, a function sum would be a total function because the function sum generates sum of two natural numbers and for each order pair of natural numbers its sum is possible. Therefore, for every order pair of natural numbers we can generate sum. Therefore, the function sum would be a total function and the function sum is declared on a set of all functions n cross n arrow n and that arrow is without a line in, in its center. Students as you know each and every person must have its unique birthday therefore birth function would be a total function. Students recursive functions are those functions which call itself to generate outputs. For example recursive function fact which actually generates factorial for each positive integer and this recursive function is declared from set of positive integers to set of all non-negative integers. As you can see in its definition that function fact calls itself for the smaller input value. For example if you want to calculate the factorial of integer 2 then it would call the value of for the value of factorial of 1. Similarly, if you want to calculate the factorial of positive integer 3, so this recursive function would call the function factorial for the positive value 2. Another method to represent functions is known as lambda notation and lambda expression are used to represent the expression to generate outputs and it has three parts its first part is a declaration part where we declare the domain set and a variable on that domain 
and the second part is a predicate part which actually a constraint on domain elements and the third part is a term part which actually an expression to generate output for example you can see a lambda representation of a function where variable m is declared on domain set of natural numbers and this is a constraint on domain elements that you must consider input elements which are uh, greater than 4 and whatever you have input value which is actually greater than 4 you must add 5 in it to generate output for example if you take 5 as input value your output would be 5 plus 5 10 and if your input value is 6 then you will add 5 in that and your output would be 11 and so on so this function can be represented by lambda notation in that way similarly you can see another example where a variable x is declared on a domain set on non-negative integers from 0 to 10 and there is no constraint on domain elements and your output would be in the form of order pairs where the first element of each order pair would be your input value and the second element of your order pair would be square of that input value so the function in the form of enumeration can be seen in that way students we already discussed about a total function double and we can represent the function double in lambda notation as you can see that there is no constraint on domain and we can generate output using that expression similarly a function triple which actually calculates the sum of three natural numbers and we can represent this function triple using lambda notation which is given here and you can see that there is a predicate which is actually a constraint on the domain set that the sum of first two input elements must be equal to the third element and sum of three natural numbers will be calculated by taking the square of each input element and this is the first order pair and the first element of order pair represents the input value which is actually a triple and sum of first two integers is equal to third one and by taking the square of all the three natural numbers would be equal to zero Similarly, first of first two natural numbers equal to third integer and sum of square of all these three natural numbers equal to two and so on. In this lecture, we discussed about functions as special kind of binary relations. Then we discussed about partial functions where not every input value generate output and then we discussed about total functions 
where each and every value of input set generates output thereafter we discussed about function data type which is actually set of all possible functions then we learned declaring function variables on function data type and in the last of this lecture we discussed about the lambda notation to represent functions students the contents of this lecture are taken from section number 4.2.1 to section number 4.2.4 of the book software development with z so you must read section number 4.2.1 to 4.2.4 and that's all for today's lecture allah hafiz